In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at one of the most important things that you do in InDesign, and that is set up paragraph and character styles. So I'm going to create a new text frame that's a really simple, basic text frame. And you'll notice when I go to my text frame, it actually has the object style set to basic text frame. Be aware that when you um, click on an object style, it means that the the frame that you're creating will be based upon that style. So you typically want your basic text frame to be the style that you have set up as a default for when you are drawing your text frames. Um, anyway, ooh, look at that. It wants to go back. So I'm going to click off that, click on basic text frame, and create my text frame. And it still wants to make me stay on basic text frame, which is kind of annoying, but that's the way it goes. Anyway, um, I'm going to start dealing with paragraph styles. In order to have some text, let's fill this object with some placeholder text. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to zoom up a little bit with Control Plus. And I'm going to make a couple little paragraphs so that I have what I need here. Now, how do I know when I have a paragraph return or not? One of the things that you might want to do is be able to view um, hidden characters. In order to do that, I always forget where it is because I almost never use it. But um, show hidden characters. There it is. So I can see hidden characters there where I have a paragraph return there and another one there. And I really want one after Verabunt. So I'm going to have another paragraph return. And then there's paragraph return at the end. And then I'm going to expand this box a little bit because I'm going to need um, those paragraph returns for what I'm going to be doing. Now, there are two different types of text styles to think about. There are paragraph styles and character styles, and they're very, very different. By default, you almost always want to be using paragraph styles. So I'm going to go to the paragraph styles dialog box and take a look at the fact that right now there basically are no paragraph styles except for the basic paragraph style that's set up here. Now, in order to create a paragraph style, we typically want to create some text or select some text, create some text, select the text, and start changing some features about it. So I'm going to choose a font. I'll do Trajan Pro on this. Maybe I'll make that a little bit um, larger, a little bit smaller. I'm going to make it just a little bit tighter. So I'm going to make the kerning or tracking between those letters a little bit closer. And I'm also going to give that text a different color. So it's nice and red. So this is going to be my title um, style that I use here. Now, one of the things that you want to be aware of when you're using styles is that um, you can also do paragraph settings in your styles, such as the amount of space after or before this paragraph. And that's what these options are here in the paragraph options. So um, I'm going to go to this one right here, which is insert space afterwards. And I'm going to make it so there's always um, 0.125 inches after this pair or after this heading style. Now, in order to create a heading style, I want to place my um, cursor inside the text, and it doesn't matter anywhere it is inside that text. And now I can create a new style. Now, if I create a new style there, then I do need to click on the style and then click on it again to change the name and call it heading. Then to use that style, I can click on another piece of text somewhere else and then just click on that style and it uses it. So using paragraph styles will um, change the setting for an entire paragraph. So you do need to be aware of, of being able to see what is a paragraph here. And that's why we turned on the ability to see um, hidden characters. Now with our next one, our paragraph, we're going to set up a body text. So I'm going to select my text, go to my type, and maybe change something here. I know that I'm going to use Verdana. Um, it'll be 11 point, and I'm going to change my letting so it's manual instead of automatic. I'm going to change the spacing after this so that I have a quarter of an inch after my paragraph. And now I'm going to set that up as my paragraph style. In order to do that, I do the same exact thing. I create a new style, change the name to, oops, I double clicked on it, 
change it to body, and then make sure that you've also clicked on it so that paragraph uses the style. When you go to another paragraph, you'll notice that the paragraph style will reflect what you currently have selected. So I need to click on body in order for that paragraph to use it. And you'll notice now these two paragraphs are using the body style. Now anytime you select text inside of a paragraph and change it somehow, and it doesn't really matter how you change it, you can change the font, you can change you know the boldness, you can change um, your kerning tracking, whatever on it, you'll notice that you get that plus inside your paragraph style. And that um, I kind of talked about in your object styles, that will not allow me to write over that just by clicking on it because I've made a manual change to this inside this paragraph after I created the paragraph style or initialized the paragraph style on that particular paragraph. So it won't allow me by default to write over that text that I manually changed. If I press down the Alt key, however, and click on that style, it will force that paragraph back to the default paragraph style. Now, of course, having these paragraph styles is absolutely the most important thing that you can do in InDesign. So, um, of course, you can double click on your styles and change them however you want. You can change your basic formatting, you can change your character formatting, your tabs, your indenting and spacing, your paragraph rules, everything in here. It's quite robust what you can do with text. Before you make changes, you might want to go ahead and turn on the preview button and then see how um, the changes reflect to your document as you're making them. So there's Corbell, and 11 point seems to look pretty good. Letting I might take out a little bit. Go to my indent and spacing. Change my space before or after as needed. And then click OK, and you'll notice, of course, everything has changed. Now, um, talking about spacing before and after, that's one of the things that can be really, really confusing. Which one should you use, space before or space after? In my opinion, you should probably work with one or the other, but not both, typically. Meaning that if you want to make sure that your document is properly set for spacing, you typically want to use all spacing before or spacing after. Such as, I will say that the spacing will always be half an inch before a heading, and then a quarter of an inch before a paragraph, versus it'll always be a quarter of an inch after a paragraph, um, after a heading, and then a quarter of an inch before and after a heading, uh, or a paragraph or something. So anyway, just use one or the other because using both can kind of get confusing. Now, the other thing that kind of gets confusing is the difference between a character style and a paragraph style. Well, a character style is analogous to an inline style that you might have in web design. So if I select text inside here, and I want this text to be bold and blue, then what I can do is set up a new text style. So if I create this text so it uses a bold font and it uses a blue color here, now I'll go to my character styles, set up a new one, and this will be bold blue. I'll just call it bold blue for what it is. And now I do need to make sure that I use that style by clicking on it again. And I can use that style anywhere that I want, even within a paragraph. If I go to the paragraph settings, you'll see that I don't get a plus in here because it recognizes this as a character style, as a character style versus as being a manual change. If I select text and manually change it, So I'll make it look different, and I go back to my paragraph style, you'll see that I see that plus in there. And if I use the Alt key to force it back to a style, you'll notice that that text that I manually changed goes back to normal, but the text that uses the character style has not changed. So it does keep the character styles as unchanged even when you force a paragraph back to its original style. So character styles can be used for lots